Hey everyone, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Dwayne. Hello. Hey, hey, Christian. How are you doing today? So for folks that don't know who you are, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Uh, Dwayne Natwick. I am uh, out of Michigan in the USA, so uh, I've, uh, I am a Microsoft MVP in the Azure uh, area, um, and my day job is a, uh, is a senior product manager for the migration and data analytics practice at uh, CloudReach, uh, who is a, uh, a multi-cloud partner, uh, Microsoft partner, AWS, and Google, uh, one partner of the year honors with all three. Uh, oh, wow. I'm also, also previously, uh, previously worked for a Microsoft Learning Partner for a couple of years uh, as, the, uh, as the lead of the, uh, of the training architect team. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and also a regional lead for the MCT program. Very cool. And I know there's some changes that are happening with MCTs as well. Is that? Yeah, they're uh, they're changing some of the requirements around. You know where you know there was a fast track capability of of becoming an MCT by having somebody vouch for you that you've done training for over a year. Now they're going to make it a requirement to take some type of training class. Uh, they've uh, and uh, as well as. Uh, they've had a large influx over the last couple of years of office uh, of office trainers, and they uh, mm. they've uh, they're not accepting any more right now. They're allowing the the current ones to stay on board, uh, the office specialists and, and and masters and all that, but uh, but they're not bringing it anybody new, and they've kind of got a freeze on the whole program until the M Microsoft fiscal year start. You know, that's something that just people need to be aware about, too. It's, uh, you know, maybe not so much. I mean, there's always changes that are happening with the MVP program. We were talking just before we started recording about, you know, the evolution of the naming of some of them and the streamlining of some of the, the, you know, the names. And it used to be like there were uh, uh, Excel MVPs and PowerPoint MVPs and kind of all these different areas around Office. And they consolidated all those things with SharePoint and Teams and uh, uh, it, you know, everything within that Office suite and, and family products, Yammer, all of that within Office apps and services. Well, they did the same with, uh, you know, with, with Azure. So they're constantly, they'll reduce down and consolidate. And uh, I'm sure with well, every time there's a major product announcement, you can rest assured that we're not too far away from an MVP change. Like in Azure, we we're just talking about on the security side of things with the release of Azure or, or now just, the, just Microsoft, purview yes uh, so, Mic yeah. yeah microsoft purview they took the azure out of it just like they did with security center right <laughs> just like it was security center and sentinel uh at ignite where they took the yeah they're uh and, and which i think is a good idea uh really because those are some those are becoming integrated uh across the entire microsoft cloud scope so it makes it it makes it a much, you know, having Azure. I, I wonder if they're going to eventually do that with Active with Azure Active Directory. That one's one I, uh, one's one I, <laughs> that one's yeah. one I, I continuously uh, try and explain uh, when doing it when doing a training that Azure Active Directory is really not Azure and it's really not Active Directory. It's <laughs> right. it's really just branding that that it's even called that. So uh, so hopefully maybe that'll uh, that'll be the next one that uh, that drives everybody crazy in terms of a, a naming change and it gets everybody scrambling. But I like I like the name change of Purview because because it is an integrated product across SharePoint and uh, you know really any storage level account you know you have you know whether it's in azure or microsoft 365 or you know the on and the uh, you know the SaaS based products it it is uh, all integrated governance so that's a really cool direction that they're heading well it's it, it, at some point you have to abstract up because my next question is going to be like like where do you focus on azure so like you don't go in and you while there might be six or eight categories within azure it's not like you focus in on one thing. It'll, you know, your experience will be, might be more in depth in one or two areas, but you're going to be across the spectrum there. I mean, that's something even as an office apps and services MVP, and I spend most of my time around Teams and SharePoint and Yammer and OneDrive and kind of those, as well as down in the office suite. 
but I also dip my toes over into Azure and security and windows and different, different areas. So it's not like, uh, you know, MVPs are generally broad over a number of different areas, but have, you know, major concentration. So kind of what, what are your areas of focus personally? Uh, personally, it's around security governance and compliance. So, you know, I, identity and access, you know, I, I just published in March the, uh, a, an exam guide for SC300, but I've also got the exam guide coming out in, next month, I guess in, you know, later in June uh, on the SC900, which is the fundamentals, which again, goes broadly across Microsoft 365 and Azure. So, um, so I, you know, I focus on, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing talks and doing sessions in the community, it's, it, it is pretty broad mm -hmm. and, but usually, usually I'm talking, you know, if I'm talking around Azure, it's usually around like, you know, Defender for Cloud and, and Sentinel and, and how we're protecting our environments and security posture management and things like that to, uh, you know, get those in, you know, when I get into, when I'm specifically in, you know, in the Azure area, you know, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's virtually, it, I mean, it's, um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm probably more in a background of networking than, than Windows Server and SQL databases and, and deep into, into those much more infrastructure architecture oriented from, uh, from my, under, my, my level of under, level of experience and understanding. So you're doing the, um, you do the training guides. Is that, are you doing that for a certain platform or do you just do that independently? Yeah, I've been doing it for pack, uh, for pack publishing. Okay. Yep. That, and I'm there's a, just, uh, just about to get started on the cybersecurity, the Microsoft cybersecurity, uh, as well. The SC 100 that's in beta uh, right now. So I've already, so I know a couple of people that have written guides like that, uh, and that have also written books and having co-authored several books. Uh, and knowing uh, how much that process sucks. Uh, and I just think, and I always thought, it's like, wow, writing those training guides and stuff, that's going to be like worse <laughs> than writing a book. I don't know if you've, if you, have you co-authored a book or written a book yet? Yeah, that's what, that's what those guides are. Yeah. Are they, are they full books as well? They're okay. full books of the, of the exam guides. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wrote both of them over to uh, like simultaneously over the course of the last year. Um, I, you know, so you just have to make it truth. part of your life, more of a habit, you know, to go in and do that. Cause I mean, I'm just thinking what kind of blackmail did they have on you to get you <laughs> to, to write those? So, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, there, you know, I, I heard the horror stories and things like that as I, as I went in. It, it really wasn't to me a terrible experience. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed it. And that's why, I, uh, you know, as the SC 100 was coming out, I said, Hey, I'd really like to really like to do this book as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of, kind of, for me, it kind of completes the set, you know, cause the SC 300 is one of the prerequisite exams to getting that architect, that cybersecurity architect expert. And the, and I always say, you know, start with the fundamentals around any, area as well. So I'll have those three books really could be, you know, could be kind of your, you know, your cybersecurity architect, you know, set of, of books to have. So I wanted to just kind of, you know, tie that, tie the little bow around it from that standpoint when that one came out. But I mean, you know, I guess I, you know, I, I've, I spent a, you know, a part of my career as a project manager. So I, so I know how to project manage myself, I guess, pretty well. So I spent, you know, so it gave me, you know, I got, you know, I had the discipline just really to just sit down, you know, on, you know, a couple hours on a weekend and work and, you know, work on a chapter and, and, yeah. and continue and continue from that standpoint, you know, I'm up fairly early in the morning getting kids off to school. So I'd spend some time if I was running behind working, you know, working on that while kids are eating breakfast, getting off to the bus and things like that. Yeah. So, what, uh, so yeah. it was just, it is, it is a special level of discipline that you've got to have on yourself to do it though. <laughs> well, there's something to be said that I, so I started my career as a technical writer and an analyst and, and so going in and of course, outside of the Microsoft arena and, and uh, uh, early on, I went to work for EDS. And so did a lot of technical documentation as part of my role and nothing and then I was looked to as the subject matter expert on those things that I was writing about. And I sometimes amazed myself at the minutia of data, data down in the weeds that I 
understood about the products that I wrote for because I had to go and find those answers. Somebody would ask a question in a meeting and I'd go mm -hmm. back looking through my notes or I'd find and be like, that was an answer. Where should that answer be? And I improved my, uh, my content every time I, I would write those things out. I'd have these massive documents go and have conversations with people and be able to draw from my own material. It's a great way to learn about something mm -hmm. to go and write about that. Yeah. It's actually a recommendation I give for people that want to know like, well, how to become an MVP. It's like, well, go write about what you're working on, write about mm -hmm. what you know and share it out there. Be, uh, you know, be, be humble that you may not have all the answers, but be willing to go and dig and uncover the, the, you know, the answers to the questions that you're asked. Yeah, that, that's a perfect point. I mean, that's something I've been doing actually recently is, is, uh, you know, being with a company that's not just Microsoft. Um, I'm trying to just strengthen my AWS capabilities. So I've been working on the AWS solution architect associate exam. And as I was going through studying, I'm like, okay, you know, I've, I've got Azure, you know, I've done Azure training. I, you know, I've taught the architect class. What is the difference between the two? So as I'm going through a cloud guru uh, and watching the the video course, I started taking notes. I'm like, you know what? There might be other people that are going this route as well. So instead of just taking notes in one note, I started writing it, you know, writing it as as blog content blog and yeah. and putting that up in my blog and really have like you know like nine blogs that I created around each area of AWS yeah. uh, to you know that you know hey somebody else probably is going down the same route. I'm going to share it with everybody, and that's really you know. That's really what, as MVPs, you know, that really is is what how we benefit the community is just getting out there what what we're dealing with and what we're learning and and sharing it with everybody else. Yeah, there's a I know with the uh, hang, hang out with a lot of the the Gamer people, and there was uh, the the phrasing that they had for that is the working out loud model and that idea of of uh, I mean that's that collaborative social collaboration work style is that it's very flat, it's very open, you're sharing what you're doing. It's, again, the, in the, the olden days, when I started my career, so much around you know, power that was gained. And if you wanted to secure your position in a company, it was by hoarding information and being that subject matter expert and being that go-to person. And where it's now completely flipped, where the people that, that hold the most power are the ones that are the most open with their information, mm -hmm. sharing their learning path and, and going saying, I don't know the answer to that. Let me go find, you know, find that information for you. Uh, that's, that's kind of the path. I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I, I'm sure it's an MVP now. I mean, we, you hear this question, we all get this question, you know, like, how did you become an MVP? What was your path? Do you think, what were the patterns that you, that you shared, that you showed that helped you become an MVP? I, I think a lot of it was, it was my want to, to share as you as your point, you were just saying, and just getting involved, like starting to do, you know, some, uh, you know, getting involved in call for speakers and just putting myself out there. That's the first thing. The first thing really that, that I tell anybody is it's, it's putting yourself out there, taking that step to um, not worrying about, um, you know, and I tell this to people that are like train, you know, that are that are struggling as trainers or public speakers. I've, you know, I've mentored quite a few people that have come to me and said, "Hey, you know, what do you, you know? How do you get over the fear? You know, I'm terrified to talk in front of people. How do you get over the fear? And you, you've got to get past the fact that, okay, there, you know, you're in front of a group of people, uh, or you're you're doing some video content or you're doing some blog content. Um, you got to get past the fact that, you know, okay, you might be getting judged by certain people, but you're but there's also a certain group in that in there that you're helping and that you're and that you're giving something that benefits them. And so so that was really the, the big step was, you know, I started I started my my blog site, you know, I started getting involved in in uh, in just submitting, you know, submitting for calls for speakers and speaking more publicly um, and just really and just like, like I said, sharing information. I, I did start a you know, start a, a Microsoft user group that kind of got got put to a put at a standstill a little bit because it 
of the uh, oversaturation of virtual user groups because of yeah. because of the pandemic. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I couldn't really. You know, it, I, I started at the same month everything shut down, so yeah. you know, yeah. it went good. It went good for eight or so months, and then I was getting like one or two people showing up. So I was like, I didn't have a chance to really ramp it up. You know, because a lot of people that had their user groups already, they were getting 50 to 70 people that are, you know, 25 or so people were that were showing up, they were still getting those people, plus they were getting virtual people. I, you know, I had to, I, we're retooling it right now, me and the co, the co-organizers are retooling it in more, in more of a conversational aspect rather than, than death by PowerPoint type presentations and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, which, which they're, you know. There are hundreds of those out there well, right you know, now. <laughs> that's a healthy activity for every user group to go through as well. Or we're, you know, we had where we were showing up and there'd be 30 people or something in a room. And now we're, we're back to do it. We're doing hybrid. We actually were very excited. We had for the first time ever, what we have is more of a viewing party location. Four mm -hmm. people showed up, which doubled the number of people showing up. But I mean, mm -hmm. there's a bunch of people online, a couple dozen online. Um, but the, the fact that we, you know, it, not to say that moving from two to four is trending statistically it is <laughs> right. exactly, uh, but, uh, especially but, if you you're know, flatlining for a good six months and <laughs> but something, but we kind of changed the model where that was the primary and online, we just didn't make a decision. Like we're going to be back purely, uh, you know, in person where we said, we're going to do this hybrid and we're going to test things out, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. And we're still testing out. I mean, there's, it's low cost to go and try things out about the, that's part of what you need to do. You constantly look at, like we started out as a SharePoint user group and as interest in SharePoint kind of waned underneath others, it's more of an infrastructural discussion. There's still SharePoint stuff going on, but it's part of the broader teams and Microsoft 365 bigger discussions across workloads. And so we just, we changed up the makeup, of the user group around that, but you constantly adjust and like anything, I'm a marketing guy. So it's called the marketing mix. You know, as the market needs change, you adjust. If you don't adjust, it'll dry up. It'll, it'll die mm -hmm. on the vine. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Well, it's very, very cool. Well, Dwayne, it's great being able to catch up with you. And, and as we were talking about before we started recording, hopefully we'll get to see each other someday. At one of these in-person summit events that we all uh summit event about. or ignite or something right something i know <laughs> i know um yeah well on that note i heard uh some rumors about some hybrid events later this year but uh you know I'll, oh, I'll, i mean I'll, I'll I, know there, offline, I know there's some i yeah. just i just did azure live a couple of weeks ago and uh and they were they were hybrid they had people in the ne in the netherlands in person doing presentations and and all that but also had you know i did a virtual presentation and they had virtual you know virtual moderators and all that so, so i'm just looking forward really to nice microsoft event. like the microsoft hosting their events hybrid you know back in person that's mm -hmm. i think that's going to be the the moment yes when, that when, will be that will be the that will be the the crescendo right <laughs> yeah yep. well Dwayne, for for people that want to find out more about you or get in touch what are the best ways to reach you uh i've got my uh my blog site is captain hyperscaler.com uh and uh, as well as uh, my my Twitter handle is Dwayne N Cloud, so my first name last initial with Cloud on it, um, uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, you know, I'm I'm open you know to being messaged on LinkedIn and uh, and uh, meeting meeting people. Like I said, I've I have had numerous people reach out to me, you know, asking me questions about public speaking and training and things like that. Uh, happy to uh, contribute uh, from that, uh, you know, from any aspect that the, anybody has any questions. I always say that, hey, if there's an MVP, they are not shy. They are welcome all contacts. So just don't be shy. Reach out. Dwayne, yeah. really appreciate the time. Get, great to get to know you and hope to see you soon. Thanks, Christian. Appreciate it. <laughs>